Welcome back to the Engine Lab shop and another installment of the LS 5.0 engine build. In the last episode, we brought you the complete assembly of the bottom half of this engine that will sing to 8,000 RPM with only five liters of displacement. In this installment, we're gonna complete the top half of the engine with some awesome cylinder heads and valve train components. The first thing we need to do is check piston and valve clearance. So come along as we get started. Thing we need to do is set cylinder number one to top dead center. Once we do that, we can attach our degree wheel and zero it out. In order to check piston to valve clearance at specific positions, we need to swap the intake and exhaust valve springs on cylinder one to lightweight checking springs. That way we can move the valves with only finger pressure. We install the head without a head gasket, snug it to the block, and then bolt on the valve cover. The dial indicator is positioned to read the travel of the valve spring retainer on the intake valve. We rotate the engine to 10 degrees after top dead center on the intake stroke, zero the dial indicator, and then check the amount of distance we have between the valve and the piston. We move the indicator to the exhaust valve and repeat the process, but at 10 degrees before top dead center on the exhaust stroke. And we find that we have plenty of clearance on both sides. For this build, we're using a set of CompCam's Evo hydraulic roller lifters. The Evo design uses a new hydraulic cartridge that reduces the volume of oil in the lifter to gain the benefits of a reduced travel lifter but without actually reducing the available travel of the plunger. Comp assures us that these have been Spintron tested to 9,000 RPM without issue and will perform exactly how we want them to in this project. To seal the head to the block, we're using a 40 thousandths of an inch compressed thickness Cometic multi-layer seal gasket. The Lingenfelter porting program opens up the 799's intake ports to an impressive 228 cc and flows 320 cubic feet a minute at 600 thousandths of lift. The exhaust ports have been similarly improved and now measure 84 cc of volume. Besides having the chamber CNC profiled, Lingenfelter decked our cylinder heads to bring the volume down to 60 cc. Lingenfelter also fit manly 2.02 inch stainless steel hollow stem intake valves and 1.575 inch exhaust valves to reduce valve train mass and increase flow. We opted for ARP head studs to secure our heads to the block. The Gen 4 kit utilizes the same length studs for all 10 11 mm fasteners. The studs are all installed hand tight into the block and then the washers are installed with the cat eye pattern engaging the surface of the cylinder head with no lubrication. The threads and bottom of the nuts then get a coating of ultra torque fastener lube before torquing to spec. Went a little outside of the box with the push rods, opting for Comp's XDA shim adjustable push rods. This will allow us to easily test different lifter preload on the Evo lifters on the dyno. To start, we assembled the push rods at the LS standard 7 inch 400,000 length. Since valve train stability is crucial in this project, we opted for PRW's billet rocker stands as well as a set of ARP's rocker studs as added insurance.
For rocker arms, we went with a set of CompCam's VSR shaft rockers. This cost-effective solution combines the proven LS rocker arm design with upgraded trunnions and a single common shaft to enhance the valve train's overall stiffness, especially at the RPM we're planning on running. For the seam vents, we chose a braided steel kit from Earl's to make sure we clear the Holly Low Ram intake manifold. The low ram, like all of Holly's aluminum intake manifolds, is sealed to the intake ports by O-ring gaskets that need to be pressed into the machine channel in the flange. The combination of a large plenum volume and short 6.5 inch runner lengths should help the engine sing in the upper RPM range. The low ram intake kit includes a set of billet aluminum fuel rails and brackets for both tall and short fuel injectors. To seal the lid to the base, Holly uses a Viton cord seal. The cord comes long and must be cut to length and then fused together with a drop of super glue. The forward facing lid is the same as found on the Holly mid and high ram intake manifolds and is easily swapped for several different styles available, which you'll see us take advantage of in the future. The 105mm R cable-driven throttle body from Holly EFI is the largest we can fit on the intake lid and is the straight-walled version for maximum airflow at wide open throttle. The pieces de resistance of this build are the Performance Designs carbon fiber valve pillars. If you followed the build, you've seen these already, but the carbon construction and the titanium mounting hardware are designed to save weight, and the fill caps are dash 12 ORB. That will come in very handy in phase two of this build. Seriously though, who doesn't love carbon fiber? And with that, the assembly of LS 5.0 is complete. The next step of this project is to load it up and make the trek to the dyno. We have a Holly Terminator X to run everything on the dyno as we spin it up to 8,000 RPM and see how the engine compares to the simulations. If you're curious about how we stack up on the budget, make sure to head over to EngineLabs.com or the link below for the full article. As always, make sure to drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And if you have anything you'd like to see in the future, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.